Welcome back to Corbin AI, where I'm showing you daily how to start leveraging artificial intelligence in your personal and your business life. Today's video, we're going to be looking at a new feature that just came out on Zapier that's called Canvas. And essentially, this is part of the early access beta program. I'm going to go ahead and link that in the description down below. You can go ahead and join that so you can get on the wait list as well. We're going to go ahead and dive into everything that's encompassed with Canvas, essentially what the end goal I think is with Canvas and why the Zapier team created this product and connect all the dots and see how we can start leveraging it in our automations. So I must say out of all of the new features that are coming out, every single one is super cool, but this one takes the cake as this one is essentially connecting their entire ecosystem into a very UI friendly matter. And what I mean by that is that as we know, we are seeing new ecosystems emerge with Zapier, with Zapier tables, interfaces, and then of course the uh, great old Zaps, the original Shabam, the automations that created this platform. And essentially canvas is kind of taking the cake here where we're combining it all and we're seeing it visually better so just right off the bat before we even dive into canvas i want to point out as there is a lot of other automation platforms that compete and i've done videos comparing the two and showing you you know why you would choose zapier why you would choose make why you would choose pipe dream i gotta say zapier is just leap years ahead of all these other platforms now they are truly taking this to the next level when it comes to it's coming it's going past automations now a lot of the processes you're about to see right now, I could use in our business in the context of SaaS platforms and, and a ton of other platforms. But without further ado, let's jump into Canvas. And essentially what this does is it creates a user interface and allows us to see all the different uh, elements in Zapier's ecosystem in a very friendly way. So let's go ahead and just build out one together and see what we can do with it. So I'm going to go ahead and just rename this up here to test Canvas and as we see here, we got a bunch of different options. This kind of looks similar to the visual UI that we saw with the new Zapier visual editor. But, you know, we got our zoom in, zoom out, um, you know, hide summary, show summary, fit to view. So we can get right up to it. If you have a trackpad, you can scroll in and out here. We got our different tools or different functions, the drag and drop platform right here. And then, you know, we got different stuff we can add here, such as, you know, click options to add a description, actors, people, and groups involved displayed here and apps and software is referenced to be displayed here. And what's even cooler is they even integrated some AI here with some recommendations. So we're gonna see if that's useful in this context. But for now, let's just go ahead and just build out a very simple flow here where maybe it's a lead form. We combine some Gmail, we combine some you know outputs and kind of try to combine interfaces, tables and automations all into one. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and add a step here. And as you see here, we got a step involving a person or group or automated. And then we can go ahead and title the step here. We can provide actors, so maybe individuals within your team at your business. And then the apps that we could choose here is either tables or interfaces. And then of course, you know, we, we got a great our automation. Now what's amazing right off the bat is that if you're familiar with this channel, we talk about essentially how some processes within your business, no matter how much you automate, there is going to be manual discretion involved. And they even have that here as an option where default is manual discretion. So that's already super cool. Uh, in this context though, we're gonna go ahead and start with an interface block here. And we're gonna go ahead and do the purpose of lead form submitted. So then from here, we can choose our different lead forms. For us, we can go ahead and just go with Web Cafe Leads. And then it'll bring up that specific page we created on Web Cafe Leads. And we'll probably go do sign up here. And as you'll see, we can edit that specific page on interfaces if we wanted to. So I can jump over to interfaces and we'll have all the information provided here from the sign up to the thank you. And then you can kind of go into that. We go into a more in-depth tutorial on interfaces. You can check that out here on our channel. But if I come back here, I'm gonna go ahead and say, okay. And I'm gonna hit this little plus sign. And we're gonna go ahead and say add step here. And what's even cooler is they even have the option of adding bullings or true false statements or yes, no statements. So essentially we can decide to go down different paths depending on the input that we receive from the previous data block. For now that we're gonna go ahead and just say add step here. And then it kind of gives us the same UI here. So as you'll see, we start filling out this on the top left here. And essentially from here, we can kind of just build out and really connect Zapier's entire ecosystem. So I'm gonna go ahead and find the Zap that is associated with this lead form real quick. So as you see here, essentially this is the Zap we created here. So we currently have it set up where when someone submits a submission through this lead form on interfaces, we're gonna send ourselves an email to give us a notification that, hey, you know, someone just completed this underlying form here. So I come over here, I can go ahead and do automated and search for the Zapier new lead form interface and then hit continue here. And it provides, even shows UI wise, what the steps that are occurring here. And then essentially from here, as you see here, we can go ahead and hide steps 
and let's see if there's, there's no, I'm actually curious to see what it says for Git recommendations. Okay, so interesting. So essentially it's similar to the current automation I have, but it wants to essentially grab more details from the lead form. Um, there's an improved recommendation, create this out. And this is really cool. I mean, this is alpha. So we're just getting started here. This really shows you uh, essentially, you know, long-term where this is going. So let's say the next thing I wanna do here is I wanna add a step here and I wanna in integrate tables. With tables, I can go ahead and put in web cafe lead form. And essentially from here, I can visualize, uh, we can say um, lead data. And then, you know, we can keep that as the same here. And from here, you know, it doesn't really matter if it's automated or not. You just default it's involving a person. I guess I could put automated, or actually no, just leave it at default because we're doing the Zapier tables here. And as you see here, now we have visualized the underlying process that's occurring here. So we receive a lead. Let me go ahead and zoom in here. We receive a lead. Uh, and the lead gets automatically sent to our email. And then on top of that, the leads data from this form is put into our table. Now, as you see here, this bottom part right here allows us to drag in interfaces, drag in tables, uh, drag in zaps and split pass. So split pass, you know, is basically a, uh, depending on what happens before, what should we do in that context? Say the, one of the data points was essentially uh, business size. And then we can go ahead and do path one, you know, maybe it was under 10 and then this one was over uh, 20 or something like that, essentially. If it's under 10, we would proceed with this steps. If it's below uh, over 20, we would proceed with these steps in the automation flow. You know, this is really cool. And the reason this is really cool, and I'm already, my, the wheels are kind of turning in my head right now, is essentially as this ecosystem gets more fleshed out, as obviously the tables, interfaces, and now this, you can really start visualizing complex back end flows that incur within your business um, at a very, very simple UI level. I mean, the, the stuff that's occurring here is, it, it just really shows you. And I remember uh, when I watched some of the videos from Zap Connect, one of the uh, speakers was talking about essentially, they were trying to build out a, uh, basically be a full stack engineer in like 2010 and build out an entire SaaS uh, and raw coded essentially. And essentially what they're doing here is that they're giving people the ability to really build out you know, stuff that like five, six years ago would have required a ton of code, a ton of cost, and, you know, really show you how to visualize it now. So the, the main use case I see for Canvas right here is when you really start leveraging automation, when you really start understanding how to connect the dots, it's going to be an absolute power machine because in theory, this can get very complex and you don't have to get overwhelmed anymore because it seems like Canvas is going to give us the ability to really, you know, I could sit down here and let's say, uh, you know, I have a contact form uh, on my SaaS platform and they fill it out. Now what I can do is I can really build out the entire flow, really branch it out and give me more context of how it should proceed essentially and even has share up here. So that's interesting. Um, let me see what this can do. So we can download the PNG. That's super cool. Uh, you can change the name here and we can share with anyone at personal access. Okay, that's that's super cool as well. I mean, imagine you're building out a automation for a client and the and the client required you to use interfaces, tables, and automations, and now you can send and share the underlying automation through Canvas. So let's see what we got else here. Got options. Okay, same thing, same deal. Um, and then we got recommendations over here and um, you know, some other options for tool selection. I mean, this is all alpha, but I definitely see where they're going with this. This is very much long-term game here. They are gonna absolutely dominate the market when it comes to this niche because of the fact that now we're kind of moving past automations and we're making it where we're building out an entire ecosystem on Zapier's backend. Uh, that being said, if they had a public stock, I would totally invest in it. Um, <laughs> but without further ado, uh, if you found value in today's video, make sure to like the video. It's completely free. If you like this kind of content, you wanna see more content on this topic, you can check out the playlist at the end of this. I'm going to link the one that talks about AI tools and business and essentially shows you different automation tools, different AI tools you can start leveraging, give you more context and all this stuff. I think this right here is a step in the right direction as one, it's going to be very useful in the context of selling services to businesses, but also very useful in the context of, you know, really allowing you to instead of draw this on a whiteboard, like an actual physical whiteboard. Now I can actually use their UI and basically build out an entire flow 
uh, of what I want to achieve. So this is a very powerful tool in that context. Plus it's going to be this is alpha. So I can't even imagine what the production level is going to be. But without further ado, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for tuning in. And yes, surprise. I'm an AI avatar. Make sure to explore more here at Corbin AI, where we demystify AI for your personal and business life. Until next time.